Well, good morning. Good morning. And congratulations on choosing what I think is the most superior career that any person in the world today could possibly choose to do for their life's endeavor. I think we are on the cutting edge of business and personal development, and we're creating a new paradigm of those things throughout this country and throughout the world. Uh, you know, I think this month, uh, Success Magazine, once again, we're on the cover, network marketing, they're talking about $68 billion a year uh, in income. We're now done in all 50 states, over 70 countries and territories around the world, and more coming on on a regular basis. The estimates are anywhere from 14 to 20 million people I've heard around the world are participating in this business. And if you're new here for the first time, that's really the person I want to say congratulations to. If you're listening to this tape and you've just started out in the business and you're learning about it, that's the person who needs the congratulations. You've done something that most people don't do, which is to get out of the status quo, to look for a better way, to realize there's a better way and that the better way comes from helping other people make a better way, from empowering people. I won't teach you anything today. I hope what I will do is help you unfold today because I believe uh, you have the talents you need to build a large, exponentially grown organization to support your people, develop lifetime residual income, and create a lot, of, a lot of value for the people in your lives. I'm writing a book based on some of the material we're talking about today. And I was thinking about the forward because I had already written it originally and I was thanking people that have helped me over the course of my years in the business. So that forward was already written and, and the more I thought about it, I kind of wanted to change the forward and I wanted to thank all of my friends, neighbors, and relatives who told me I was an idiot to get involved <laughs> in multi-level marketing. Uh, Fifteen years ago that happened and, and uh, I faced, I think, as much negativity as probably anyone ever has. I come from a very modest uh, financial background. My family, there's not a lot of people with a lot of money in my family. There is a very strong lack consciousness in my family and of course I created that same environment around me with my friends and neighbors and associates. I was surrounded by people who were manifesting those kind of things in their life. And when I saw the vision and thought there could be more, those people thought I was nuts and they told me I was nuts and I just kept going on. And, and, and the more I thought about it, because of my the chip on my shoulder or my makeup or my psychological profile or whatever you'd want to call it, I, I think I stayed in the business more to prove those people wrong than I did to reward the support of the people who were actually trying to help me. Now, I'm not proud of that. I don't think that's probably a very positive way to do that kind of thing, but I also happen to know what my mindset was at the moment and that's really what drove me and some of you are facing that situation right now and I gotta tell you stay the course this business has changed my life enhanced it for the better forever and you're surrounded by people in this room today who it's done the same thing it is a revolutionary method of distribution Distribution being one of the areas where fortunes will be made as we go into the millennium. We have changed from an industrial society. We have changed from many of the past ways of doing business. And distribution, I think, is going to be one of the major cutting trades. There are two major things that, to me that, that uh, portray the, the future of business. One is the selling of information. And the other thing is distribution. And in network marketing, I think we're pairing up both of those things in many different ways in a lot of different companies. We've got a, a current system now that has about 65% of the cost of a product is tied up with the warehousers and the jobbers and the wholesalers and the, all the parasites who are in the middle between the manufacturer and the end consumer. 
And for those of you who are new in the business, you need to understand that. That's where your money comes from, is we have taken all those people out of the middle there in the traditional distribution concept. And we've done this new paradigm of distribution, which is from the manufacturer to the distributor, who is many, many cases the end consumer. So we got 65% of that cost to play with. So if you wonder, well, how do they make that kind of money? How, it must be illegal. It must be obscene for people to make those kind of incomes. Because nobody I know in regular jobs makes those kind of lifestyles, makes those kind of incomes. That's because of that 65%. I once heard said that uh, a box of cereal that you might see in the supermarket for $2.50 or $2.75, that the actual food cost of that was about 15 cents. And the rest of the cost was a little bit for packaging and then primarily for distribution and advertising. And that's what we eliminate here and we conversationally market things. So that's the new business that's going to take us into the millennium. And I congratulate you for being a part of it. And my job in the universe is to pay back the help I got and take the knowledge I got and transfer that to you. And that's what I'd like to do today through the course of these tapes. A couple of things. The section that we're doing right now, it's called What You Need to Know First. This is kind of the mindset you need to create. Some background information. I used to have another section called Getting Started First, but I've made that the second section because what I found is that there's some information I believe each and every one of us needs to know when we first started in the business. I wish when I began I would have had some of this information. Some of it I got six months later. Some of it I got six years later. And if I would have got it when I first started out, it would have dramatically increased the ability I would have had to build my business and achieve success. So first thing I would like to talk to you about is to please know your dreams. We're a business about dreaming, about reclaiming our dreams. Here's what I know. When you're a teenager and you're growing up, you just know that when you get older, you're going to be the president of the United States a rock star, or an astronaut. And we just know that's going to happen. And all of a sudden, one day we turn around and we're 29 years old or we're 35 years old, and we say, hey, it isn't going to happen. Here I am working at the factory, or here I am working at the garage or the BK lounge or whatever it is for 300 bucks a week or 500 bucks a week, or you know what? It could be 1,000 bucks a week. But we've suddenly discovered that we're not living our dreams. We're living to supply someone else with their dreams. We're working a job for someone else. So what you have to do to be successful in networking before you do anything else, before you do a list, before you, do, before you set your goals, before you hand out any prospecting materials, before you make your first presentation, you have to get in touch with what is your dream. You have to go back and find out what it was. And hopefully, you never lose it. You lost it. You know, I lost mine along the way somehow in the time of growing up and getting a job and going to work in the marketplace. I got away from my dreams. And it took network marketing to get me back onto my dreams. And that's what you've got to do first if you want to be successful in this business. Two to four year plan is what I'd like you to set for yourself and your dreams. What we've seen is people who follow this system that we're talking about today can achieve success in two to four years. If you do this in a serious way, in a big way, you can achieve your dreams. In two years' time, you can develop a lifestyle of complete financial independence in this business. If it takes you three years, if it takes you four years, who cares? It's a funny thing. People get involved with this business. And they say, well, I, I've done it for a year. And it, I'm not rich yet, so I think I'll quit. And they quit and go back to their job, which for 10 years has never made them rich. And they're going to work it another 35 years, and it's never going to make them rich. And they're going to retire on Social Security and make $800 a month, or 40% of their income. 
The vast majority of people in this country, in most countries, don't have a pension plan, don't have enough savings for retirement, and have to retire and live on about 40% of what they made when they were productive years in the workforce. And you know what? Most people I know can't survive on 100% of what they make in their productive years in the workforce. So what kind of retirement is that? So get in touch with your dreams. Network marketing can deliver for you if you know your dream and you treat your business like a business. Two kind of people do this business. First group does it like a hobby. Second group does it like a business. The people who do it like a hobby, they get a hobby check. The people who do it like a business, they get a business check. See, the hobby people, they make one presentation every 60, 90, or 120 days. When they happen to meet somebody at the bank who happens to tell them that they're looking for vitamins, or happens to tell them they need to lose weight, or happens to tell them this, and then they try and get a presentation out of that. People who do this like a business, they're drawing circles every week. At least two times a week, you should be making a presentation, whether it's for yourself or one of your frontline people or one of your leaders in depth. At least twice a week for a part-time person to do this as a business, you should be making a presentation. As we go through the day, we'll look at some of the more specific stuff that we'll do in terms of how you schedule your day and how many presentations you make at the higher levels, things like that. So please, treat your business like a business and know the value of the business. It's not uncommon for, for businesses to sell for many times what one year's annual earnings are. And we've got a business here that can produce, literally can produce 80 and 90 percent profit margins, which is absolutely the complete opposite of traditional businesses, which is running 80 to 90 percent cost margins and a 10 to 20 percent profit. We have people who are doing the exact opposite in this business. They're working out of a home with one or two phone lines, a fax machine in their spare bedroom, a desk in their spare bedroom, the absolute minimal amount of overhead and bringing in deliciously outrageous incomes, most of which are falling down to the bottom line. And you need to know that the resale value, these distributorships that we're building, literally can be worth millions of dollars. So please, treat it in a business-like way. So know your dreams. The next thing I would ask you to do is to know what are you willing to give up to get those dreams. Because you will have to give up something. You will have to sacrifice, and you have to ask yourself every, every step along the way, what will be more important in two to four years? Many of you are working regular jobs. You have to say, okay, if I'm working 40 to 50 hours a week in my regular business, or 60 hours, and I've got the kids and the dry cleaning and the bills to pay and taking them to soccer practice and going to church on one night, where do I find the time? But you've got to make the thing. You've got to say, what will be more important? Am I willing to sacrifice for two to four years? So at the end of that time, I won't have to sacrifice anymore. I won't have to make those kind of choices anymore. I will be able to live the kind of lifestyle that I'd like to live. Next thing I would ask you to do is to set your sphere of influence for the next two to four years. And that's what John was alluding to in the introduction also. Your group of ten closest friends... Who are those people going to be for the next two to four years? Think right now the ten people who are closest to you in their life. What kind of income do they make? What kind of satisfaction do they get from their job? What kind of real value service are they providing to the universe in their job? Most of you know people who are broke. Most of you know people who are not happy with what they do. Most of you know people who are doing things that are not giving value to the universe. And if you will keep those 10 people as your closest advisors, you will remain in that position and they will remain in that position for the next two to four years, regardless of what you attempt in network marketing. You will have to change your sphere of influence. And that should begin with your sponsor. Your sponsor is qualified to teach you and they have a vested interest in your business, your sponsor and your sponsorship line. So please understand that. Your upline sponsor should be your best 
friend, your best business friend, your closest personal friend in the business should be your sponsor. And your sponsorship line should be the people that you look to for advice. If you want to learn how to fly airplanes, you need to talk to pilots. If you want to climb a mountain, you need to talk to people who have climbed mountains. So if you want to build a network marketing organization, you cannot talk to your buddy down at the job who was in Herbalife four years ago, made $200 once and then dropped out. He's not qualified to give you information on how to build a network marketing organization. The only people who can give you that information, that mentorship, that guidance are people who are doing it and people who have done it successfully. So please look at your current friends and acquaintances, where they are, where you'd like to be, and then look at where you'd like to upgrade and start to bring those people into your lives. Develop that relationship with me. If you're listening to this tape and you didn't get it from me, you bought it from one of my dealers, please call my number, 800-432-4243 or 305 305- 864-6658 and say, please put me on your mailing list. Send me out a catalog. Keep me in touch. Develop relationships with people in the industry. Successful people even in other companies. We don't have to be out there competing with each other, trying to kill our competition. There's 250 or 60 million people in this country of which about 249 million of them are not in network marketing. Uh, please understand your competition is not the people on your left and right. Those people are your colleagues. These are the people who are taking network marketing to the next level, who have brought in the kind of people that we're bringing in now, created the kind of image that we're developing and the good that we're creating out there in the world. These people are your friends, your colleagues, your associates. Work with them, partner with them. They're not the enemy. The enemy is corporate America. The enemy is the rat race. The enemy is this whole mistaken, false belief that you go to school, you get an education, and then you get a job for a big company. You know, my mother, when she raised me, said what you need to do is go to college and get a job for a big company like GM or AT&T. <laughs> She told me that my whole childhood. And you know, it was what, about three days ago that AT&T is laying off another 40,000 people, which is on top of 8,000 they just laid off. And GM, I mean, and, and IBM, that was the other company. She used to say IBM. Remember IBM? Nobody was ever laid off from IBM. Now it's tens and tens and tens of thousands. There's about 500,000 jobs a year being eliminated every year, about 500,000. That is a lie. Job security is a lie. The only job security you have is when you can wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and you're talking to the boss. <laughs> Next thing I would tell you you need to know first is that you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. Commit to operate on the fringe of fear. <laughs> you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to be neurotic. You don't have to be crazy. But just get out on the fringe of fear. Make that one phone call you're a little nervous about inviting somebody to meet. Talk to that one person that you think makes a, a little bit more money than you might be comfortable talking to. Somebody who's a, a little higher stature that you might be a little bit nervous about. Get on that fringe of fear. If you're operating on the fringe of fear, you're in the realm of personal growth. If you're in the realm of personal growth, you're in the realm of business growth because the two are in a, intertwined unbelievably. You cannot separate them at all. So just know if you've got a little bit of nervous there, just a little bit operating on the fringe of fear, that's what's going to make you successful. So, well, that might make me stressful. Or, hey, if I'm working all those hours, 40 hours a week, and then I work 10 hours on top for my business, I'm going to be stressful. Well, you know what? Stress is what makes you go to the top of your comp plan. 
It is why you become diamond or executive director or presidential director or whatever it is in your particular compensation plan. Stress is the thing that can drive you to do that. Stress is not inherently bad or inherently good. Too much stress is bad for everybody. A little bit of stress is good for you and it keeps you on the edge and it keeps you producing and it gets you, means you're out of your comfort zone. So please operate on the fringe of fear. Invest in tools to build your business and set aside the time you need to build your business. You know, when I was broke, I used to think I didn't have time to do this business. Can you imagine that? When I was broke, I didn't think I had time because I was so busy going to my job paying me $250 a week that I didn't think I had time to do this business. Well, I got over that and you need to too. Next thing I'd like to tell you is my function here today. My role is not to judge you. It's not to criticize you. It's not to ridicule what you do. Although I may do all of those things today. <laughs> but that's not my role. And I may do all of those things today and I will probably do all of those things today. I will do it out of love. I will do it because I want you to look at my information. That's all I want you to do is to look at my information. I will tell you some things today that will probably be radically different than you've ever been trained. I will tell you some things that you might think are extremely controversial. Well, it's not that my ways are right or that your ways are wrong. There are a lot of different ways to build a business. I just know that I've been very successful building businesses with walk away residual income that continues to grow whether I work or not. And that's what this business is supposed to be about. I talk about not leading with the products. I talk about not doing a sales approach. I talk about things that are maybe totally different than what you may have heard, what you may have seen, what you may have been taught. The reason why I do those things is because I found that what works is totally irrelevant in this business. And please understand that because some of you are going to say, you don't understand. I always lead with the products. I sell the products in my doctor's office. We have a lot of patients trying them and I do $20,000 a month in volume. You know what? That works. I don't dispute that it works. You know you've got situations that we know they work. We also know they don't duplicate. Whether something works in this business is totally rough. So you can tell me, yeah, we've got, we're doing $50,000 volume. I don't care. You can tell me you're mailing out tapes, cassette tapes by the mail, renting mailing lists, and it works. I don't care because it doesn't duplicate. You can tell me you're taking full page ads in the USA Today and you're sponsoring thousands of people. You know what? It works. You could take an ad on the Super Bowl. You know what? It's coming up on the 28th. You could take an ad and you could sponsor 20,000 people in one night. But what are those 20,000 people going to do? Because the way that you bring in your people is the way they will try to bring in their people. So I have done some things and I have created levels of success that very few people do. I make an income higher than, they, I can make more in a weekend than a lot of people make in five or ten years. So what I want you to know is, I'm not telling you my way is right. I am telling you it works. Now what you want to do with that information is your responsibility. I have no responsibility for your future, for your success, for what you do with this information. It has to begin with you. So I may shake up your consciousness a little. I may tease you a little bit or joke about a way you do things. Well, I'm doing it because I want to get your attention. <laughs> I guess I could sum it up with this. I'm not asking you to do what I do. I'm asking you to listen to why I do what I do so you can make an informed decision for yourself. That would sum it up. All right, how do we make money in this business? You can earn income two ways. The first way is to create volume. The second way is to create business centers. These are the only two ways that you get paid in this business. This is what you need to know first as you begin your business. How do you make money? You make money creating volume. How do you create volume? With personal use, by retailing or professional marketing. 
So in other words, if you're retailing to your friends, neighbors, and relatives, that's creating volume. If you're professionally marketing, by that I mean, let's say your company has a long distance service and you're going around and you're selling it to businesses, or your company has a, uh, uh, credit card merchant status and you're selling that to businesses. That's professional marketing, professional sales. You could be doing that. Or the third thing is through wholesale or direct customers. You might have a deal with your company where you just sign up people and they buy wholesale because they want to order direct. Or you may have a preferred customer program. You may have an auto ship customer program. Some type of situation like that where people are buying direct from the company. They're not distributors but they're, or business builders per se, but they may be distributors, wholesale, retail or personal use. How do you create business centers? Business center, you get paid there for the upcoming builders in your group and your direct lines or breakaways. Those of you in a stair-step breakaway program, that's what we mean by they break away, they become a direct, they become their own organization. If you're in a binary, that might be an income center. Someone's at an income center and they're building an organization beneath that. That's what you get paid on. Those are the only two things. We don't get paid to train. We don't get paid to sponsor people. We don't get paid to sell distributor kits, to sell training materials. We get paid for creating volume, creating direct business centers. How is this done? Well, it's a business of relationships. I believe you begin with friendship. From friendship, it should go to distributorship. And from distributorship, it should go to a directorship. And you can't skip any step in the process. Now, some of you say, or may want to know, well, how do I build by mail? How do I take ads in the newspapers? How do I take classified ads? How do I mail out tapes? How can I do things to get outside of my warm market to go to my cold market? Well, I can tell you this. We will not be talking about any of those things today. If you would like to do, and, and here's why we're not going to talk about them. Because they work, but they don't duplicate. Now, I've done those things better than probably anybody in the world. In terms of building by mail, I've done things that nobody in the world has ever been able to do building by mail. I've had success building by mail probably unparalleled. And you know what? I did that for years, and it worked. And it was very successful, and I made a lot of money. But my people didn't make a lot of money. I was very successful with display advertising. I've done display ads that were still control ads six years later. And nothing anybody's ever been able to do has been able to beat that control ad. And I'm proud of my ability to do those things, but that's not what I want to teach you today. What I want to teach you today is what I would do if you were my personal enrollee on my front level in a company and I was working with you and if you came to me and said you want to take ads I'd say no. You say you want to take classifieds? No. You want to build by mail? No. You want to go to the mall and hand out tapes to people on the street corner? No. If you want to do those things go to one of my boot camps or they're over but get the home study version of the boot camp or there's an album back there it's called MLM Advertising Strategies. If you want to do those things if you want to know those things Get that album and that will teach you those things. That's not the focus of our time here today. Our focus is I'm going to try to teach you what I know works, what I know duplicates. What that is, is working your warm market. What that is, is developing friendships, developing lifetime relationships. That's where your future lies. I've got to tell you, you can take an ad and sponsor a lot of people. You can bill by mail and sponsor a lot of people. And you know what? When they get another really good direct mail letter from someone else about the hot new pantyhose deal that's paying another quarter percent on the third level, you know where they're going? They're all rolling over into that deal. And when you sign up all those people with the display ads in the newspaper because your sign-up's only $19.95, well, what are you going to do six months from now when the next deal comes out and they have the free sign-up? And all you got to do is mail postcards and the downline building services who are going to build their downlines for them. I'm not interested in those people in my organization. I've played, been there, done that. I'm interested in building lifetime relationships. I want to build the line once and get paid forever. And that's done with relationships. 
So that's what I think you need to know first, is how to build those relationships. Develop a friendship, turn the friendship into a distributorship, and then turn the distributorship into a directorship. And that'll be the focus of the following sections that we're going to go through. The last thing I want to talk about in this segment is the system. Having a complete, duplicatable, step-by-step -step system. Now, let me explain what that means when I say system. That means that the basic presentation that you're doing for OxyFresh in Washington is the same one that your people in Texas are doing, and it's basically the same one that the people in New York are doing. It means if you're in Biogeme in Dallas that your line in Oklahoma does the same Base, does the same pre-approach packet. The first thing you give a prospect is the same on your first level, your fifth level, your fiftieth level. It means if you're in Excel and you've got people on your fifteenth level, they're doing the same basic training with a new distributor as somebody who's on the fiftieth level does, as somebody who's on the hundred and fiftieth level or the five hundredth level. So it's step by step by step. When you first meet a prospect, this is step one. They get this book, this tape. Step number two is the presentation. They get the company materials packets, this brochure, this brochure, and this tape. Step number three is the follow-up process. It gets this and this and this. Step number four is this. This is the get started training. Here's the training we do within 48 hours. Here's the training we do within two weeks. Complete, specified, step-by-step, -step, duplicatable system. That's where walk away residual income comes from. It cannot happen if you do not have a, orthodox, a religious system that you do not deviate from. That means if the presentation kit is a tape, a video, a tape, a video, and a book, and a brochure, that you don't say, well, you know what? I don't like that tape. I like this other tape better, so I think I'm going to use this tape instead. Because see, Fred here is on your first level. He sees that you change. He says, well, you know, I don't really like this brochure. I think I'll use this brochure instead. So he changes it. So when he sponsors him, he already, there's no system. So he substitutes a different video. So now when it comes to my friend here, there's no system for her to follow. You have shot yourself in the foot because you've destroyed your residual income because you got away from the system. How do you change a system? You have to change it from within. I don't like the system my sponsorship line has. I don't want to use that system. Quit. Go join another organization. Join another company, is my advice to you. You need to be working with a sponsorship line and a company that you can completely edify and follow the system without any personal reservations. Well, I don't like the way they're doing it. I think it's unethical the way they do that. Well, get out of that organization. What do you do in an unethical organization? How do you change a system? You have to change it from within. You know how we change a system in my organization when I was still building? I did a leadership conference once a year at a nice resort somewhere in the springtime, somewhere where it's warm in the wintertime, like February, January. So we might have 200 people there who are just my breakaway direct, you know, high pin levels, leaders. And we'd come and let's say we wanted to switch, somebody wanted to switch from book A to book B. Well, we'd send that stuff ahead. 200 people all got a copy of book B to read book B and know that we were considering to change book B instead of book A into the system. Everybody talked about it. We read it. We discuss it. And then I would make a decision, whatever that might be. We stay with book B, A, or we go to book B. And if we go to book B, then we say, January 31st at midnight, the system changes. So if you do an opportunity showcase on the night of the 31st, book A is what we give in the company materials packet. On, Jan on February 1st, the system goes to book B. And this is when we go to book number B. So anything you do up to the 31st gets book A. Anything after the 31st gets book number B. Put it in the newsletters. Put it on the voicemail. Start the telephone tree. You call your frontline people. They're responsible for calling all their frontline people. They call their frontline people. They, and it goes all the way through the organization. Treat it at the meetings, do it at the trainings, do it at the voicemail. That's how you change a system. You can't change a system, well, I think I'll you know, do this one instead. Because you've just shot yourself in the foot. Why is it important? Because that's the only way you get the walk away residual income. It's the only way you take you out of the equation. 
if you're a doctor, if you're a chiropractor, if you're a reflexologist, if you're a salesman in a company. You see, salespeople can't be duplicated. Doctors can't be duplicated. Reflexologists, iridologists, acupuncturists, they can't be duplicated. So what you need to understand is the thing that you think is your strength, because you're in, a, you're in Shackley and you're a chiropractor and you think that's your strength because you know so much about nutrition and you have patients coming into you, that's your biggest weakness because that's what can't be duplicated. Because people are coming and say, well, yeah, if I was a doctor and I had 50 patients coming in every day that I could prescribe the products to, I could do a big volume too. But see, if you use a system, that takes that stuff out of the picture. Because if you use a system, it means we meet a prospect, they get the pre-approach packet, which is this tape and this book. Doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a waitress, a bus boy, an Indian chief. You follow the same system that everybody else does. Now, why doesn't everybody do that? Well, the problem is, not only does it take that personal background out of it, but it takes the ego out of it. And we don't like to take the ego out of it. Because we want to be, we want to be able to create new tapes and design new brochures and create new presentations. We want to show that we can do this better than our sponsor did this. What you need to do is you need to edify your sponsorship line. You need to follow the system. You need to build your own success. And at that point, with your own success and your own organization, you could make a choice to create your own system. But I got to tell you, 99 times out of 100, that's a mistake. Because you will always do better to edify an existing system. Because now if you do, all of those people work for you. So I don't care if you're a supreme NATO commander blue diamond in your company. <laughs> so you've reached this highest level and you've got five of these supreme NATO commanders above you and you're at equal rank with them. And you figure, well, now I'm a NATO commander. I don't need to. I can create my own system. Well, if you're smart, you won't. Because if you don't, then those other five NATO commanders, they still work for you. If your company has a system which you follow, it means the convention works for you. The leadership conference works for you. The conference calls work for you. The newsletters work for you. If you go cross-purpose with that system, it means all of those resources, multi-million dollars worth of resources, now work against you. Because now what you have to do is you have to get on the voicemail and say, okay, there's a new article in the newsletter out that Cindy wrote. Tell all your people we're not doing that in our organization. So start the phone tree and tell everybody we're not doing that. And then it means at the convention you say, okay, everybody in my group come over in the corner. What they were just saying in this workshop, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's for those people, but... We're doing something different because these products are so special. They don't understand that, you know, we need to do it this way. So our organization, we're going to do that. So it means at the leadership conference, you're doing the same thing. Well, yeah, he's a nice guy. I liked some of what he said, but that's a good idea. I'm sure they mean well, but. Oh, yeah, I heard that thing, what the president said. And I know, but. So all of those people now are working to destroy your business. Not because they want to destroy your business, they're one, they want to help your business. But when you get cross-purpose with the system, the system now works against you. So my advice is always follow the system, and I've done this. I follow an existing system, or if I cannot follow it, I quit. And I go to a system where I can follow it. Because I have to work too hard when I have to work against the system. We're going to talk today about how you create one. Here's a sequence on, on how a system would look. Uh, what, and we're going to talk about these in depth as we go into the different segments. The first step is uh, qualifying questions in my mind and then what I call a pre-approach packet. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. 
The next step would be a presentation, and then we would usually send home like a company materials packet. We'd go to a follow-up process. There may be an additional follow-up process next, and then an enrollment. So that's how it works. Now this is just a guideline. Every one of you all is in different companies. You have different materials. I cannot create a system for you over the course of this tape album or this seminar. I don't have the information. What I can do is give you a guideline. Tools to use in a pre-approach packet are screening type of tools to get out the non-prospects. The kind of things you'd use in a company materials packet are usually a product catalog, a business plan brochure. If you've got a presentation kit with your company, you'd use that. I like to put a generic network marketing book in the company materials packet. My experience is that most of these company items are totally product-centered. There's very little about the industry. I want to give some of that information, some credibility of the industry. So I suggest usually a book like that in the, in the company materials packet. The follow-up process, that should be the more in-depth stuff. That should be the breakdown on the process of product information pages or the product booklets. If you have product tapes, testimonial type audios, if your company has a profile of uh, who the founders are and where their headquarters are and the training systems and the support systems and it's kind of like a, a company or an annual report, that's the kind of thing I'd use in a follow-up process. Uh, the additional follow-up, that's where I'd use videos. Now this is one of the things that may be diametrically opposed to what other people have taught you. There's a lot of people out there selling prospecting videos. There's a lot of companies out there doing presentation videos. I don't believe in them. People look on those as the way for success, that they're going to create this video that's going to go out and sponsor their distributors for them. I have never seen a video, an audio, a book, booklet, or special report that has ever sponsored anyone. I believe people are sponsored by people. Tools don't, it's like they say guns don't kill, people do. <laughs> well, tools don't sponsor people, people do, is my opinion. So I like videos, I like them to back up, support, they're, they're very effective, they're visual. I don't believe that they make presentations. I usually have them somewhere later in the process. So that should give you an idea of the kind of way to build a system. Now we'll go through some specific sections. What you really need to know probably more than anything else, is you cannot sell your way to the top of your company pay plan. You cannot sponsor your way to the top of your company pay plan. And you can try it. I don't care if you do $50,000 a month volume in your personal group, it won't take you to the top of your company's pay plan because you need to have width. And I don't care if you sponsor 500 people this year. You will not go to the top of your company's pay plan. At least I'm assuming you have a good pay plan that's designed to work. If it's a true pay plan that is effective and will work, you cannot sell your way to the top and you cannot sponsor your way to the top. The only way you can get to the top is to teach and duplicate your way to the top. So that's what we do with the system. And so the last thing you need to know first is to please find, use, edify, and follow a system. We're going to talk about getting started, what you need to know first. This is the foundation that you build your business on. What I've discovered is that you will make or break your new distributors in the first two weeks. You will make or break them in the first two weeks and the first 48 hours are the critical time. Here's the analogy I give so you know what I'm talking about. I used to be in the restaurant business most of my career. So being in that business means you hire about 2,000 teenagers every week to replace the 2,000 who quit since last week because they couldn't get off for the you know, Hootie and the Blowfish whole Twisted Sister concert or whatever <laughs> came to town that week. So uh, I discovered something hiring all those kids. Whether or not they were a good employee or not, whether they were the kind who stole money out of the cash <laughs> register, the kind who showed up on time, the, the kind who called in sick every time there was a party, that was determined long before they ever came to me. That was, they were molded during their formulative years. 
by their parents, their coaches, their ministers, their spiritual advisors, their uh, teachers, their peers. And when I, by the time they came to me, I could move them a little bit this way or a little bit that way, but the basic die had been cast. And I, I, what I'm trying to tell you is that the formulative years for your new distributor is the first two weeks. It goes back to that business attitude versus hobby attitude. If you bring them in with this get started training and, and you, you do it in a business-like way, they approach their business like a business. They're making appointments, they're circulating pre-approach packets, they're making presentations, they've got their hours scheduled off. If you just say, well, go home and think of some people you know who'd be interested in this business and send them on their merry way, they will be one of those people who take it as a hobby. They'll make that presentation every 90 or 120 days because they happen to bump into someone at the video store and they, they do their business with that type of reality. You will determine that. You will create the culture in your organization and you're going to do it. So, the, you know, the die is going to be cast. The formulative years of your new distributor is actually two weeks. So there's a couple of things we're going to look at here. The first thing we're going to look at is do it now, meaning that it should be done already. So if you haven't done, if you're listening to this tape and there's anything we talk about that you haven't done yet of these things, then we want you to do it right now. And then after that, we're going to look at the, the 10 things I want you to do now to start your business out in the best possible way. So let's look at the things that should already be done by this point. Use this as kind of a checklist to make sure that it's done. By now, you should have placed your first order. You have to use the products or services personally or you're never going to be able to build effectively. Nobody has ever built a, a business without using the products or services themselves. When people come to you and say, uh, oh, someone came to me once a few years ago and said, hey, Randy, I got this guy, he's dynamic, he's in the Chamber of Commerce, he's in the Rotary, he's this, he's going to be so good. I said, great, Ron. What did he get for his first order? He said, well, I didn't get an order yet. Said, Ron, you didn't get an order yet, how come? He says, I didn't want to pressure him. I said, Ron, do you realize you're putting the most pressure on that guy that can possibly be in this business, which is to try and build the business without using the products himself? It just can't be done. People have to be users, advocates, proponents of the products or services, or they won't make it. Now, how much should they order? Well, I learned a nice little formula for this. It's somewhere between what you need and where you're nervous should be somewhere in the middle there. Because see, what you need is not enough. If you get just what you need, that's not enough. You're going to meet people who are going to want product. You're going to want to sell product to new distributors who want to get started right away. You have to have some kind of inventory. Now, does that mean we need warehouses full of diet cookies, garages full of water filters? Absolutely not. So if you're in the fringe of fear, you probably got the right order. OK. Schedule your get started training with your sponsor. Ideally, you want to do this within 48 hours from the time you sponsor in. And you guys, what you have to do is make sure that you schedule this training within 48 hours from the people that you sponsor. The first 48 hours are critical. You don't want to leave people hanging in the wind. Now, what we're going to do at that training, we're going to talk about in just a couple of minutes. We want them to buy a daily planner or an appointment book. Now, ideally, I would love for them to get that power line systems planner, which is made specifically for network marketing. That is just a lifesaver to anyone in this business. It's designed just for us. Uh, but if they can't afford that and they got to go to Office Depot and buy a $10 appointment book, then that's what they got to do. We're going to work with people from where they are and, and build from there. But they've got to have an appointment book. I got to tell you that I wouldn't work with someone who didn't have an appointment book. This is a business of your word, it's a business of appointments, and you cannot manage your business without an appointment book. So I want them to buy that appointment book, and I want them to bring it to the Get Started training that we're going to do 48 hours later. So in other words, these things that we're talking about right now, these are the things you should be doing with your new distributor when you sponsor them. When they're actually filling out the application, they say, yes, I want to join the company, 
then you do these uh, five or six things we're talking about right now at that meeting, not one day later, not two days later, it's actually at the time that they sponsor in. Okay, we want them to begin their prospect list. And now we've got a place here in the first steps booklet where they can write the names or in the study guide. What we're telling them is, please, and this is the important part, don't talk to anybody about your new business yet. Hear me, people, you're losing your very best distributors because they're all excited, they just started in, they're ready to ramp this thing up, and they're running home and trying to talk to their brother-in-law and sponsor them in the business. They've seen a presentation one time. They don't know the answers they're going to get to the questions they're going to get. They don't even know the questions. You send those people out there all by themselves to fight the forces of evil, and you will lose them. Because they will run home and they, oh, I just joined this program and it's great. You do this, you help them and train them, and then you become an executive, and then you kind of break, you break away. What is, is that? You mean, and that's what the brother-in-law is going to say, or particularly, that's a little different in your case because you've got a core network, but let's say a, a program like Shackley and Amway and Herbalife where you've got a breakaway program. That's what they're going to say, right, when they talk to the prospect? You do this, you train them, you work with them. Their, their volume's $5,000, and now they break away and become a, a manager or director or a supreme NATO commander or whatever it is for <laughs> you know, your particular program. And, and what's the prospect going to say? They break away. So you mean after you sponsor me, you train me, then I break away and you lose me? What a ripoff that is. And, and he said, well, well no, when, when Sandy explained this to me, I think this was supposed to be a good thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> a good thing. Are you crazy? You don't know nothing. You're one of those pyramids. Boy, it's, you're going to go to prison. They're against the law. This is what your people are faced with. They don't know how to deal with objections. They don't know the answer to those questions. See, the sponsorship line has heard those things 50 times before. They know how to deal with them. So we don't want to send people out making their first presentations alone. We tell them, just put down their names in the booklet. Just put the name and the phone number if you know it. If you don't know the phone number, at least get the name down. We can look it up later. So we're going to just tell them, begin your prospect list. Don't talk to anyone, but for now, just write their names down in the booklet. Next, we want you to review the get started training tools that you receive from your sponsor. I give these things to someone when I sponsor them. So now notice I said give them, not sell them. Now, of course, Carol over here is saying, well, of course, Gage can give those things away. He makes those tapes. He gets them for free. <laughs> what about me? I'd have to pay for those things. Well, that is true. But I'm suggesting that you make that one-time investment, which would be under $20, into the new people that you sponsor. Now understand, you can't give tools to everybody in your group. You'll go bankrupt. Even if you got a huge organization, like Miss Shirley there, she'd go broke if she gave tools to everybody in her group. Because the bigger organization you have, the more people you have. So if you got 5,000, 10,000 people in your organization, you gave them all three, four tapes a book, that'd be pretty expensive. But you can afford to do it to the people that you personally sponsor and teach them to do the same thing to the people that they personally sponsor. So that's the system you want to create. So I'm suggesting that you make that one-time investment into the people you sponsor and give them those Get Started tools and have them be studying them before the meeting. That here's your homework for the next two days. I want you reviewing these materials reading your distributor kit, looking through some of the things, and then we're going to go through these things in depth when we get together 48 hours from now. So we're going to give them those tools, uh, and then we're going to sell them more later. Next, we want them to make a commitment. Success doesn't come overnight in any business, and it's no different in network marketing. What are we saying there? We're asking them to commit to 7 to 10 hours a week, because that's what you need to build the business. If somebody comes to me and says, well, I have two hours a week I can do the business, I'm going to tell them, realistically, I don't believe you could do the business. I would suggest you wait, use the products in the meantime, and come back and do the business when you can give me at least seven hours a week. Because how could you do the business in two hours a week? What would you do if you sponsored someone? How are you going to support that person? 
you can't do meetings for them, you can't make presentations for them, you can't teach them how to make presentations in two hours a week. It's not enough time. So I want a commitment of seven to 10 hours a week. I want a commitment that you're gonna take your first six months in the business as a learning experience. If you wanted to be a doctor, you're gonna to go to school for 10 years. If you wanna be a lawyer, you're gonna to go to school eight to 10 years. A nurse, you might go four or six years. A uh, computer person, a lot, two, three, four years of school. Even if you get a job at the BK Lounge, you gotta go through some training, right? They're gonna show you how to make the shake machine and how to run the french fry machine and how to operate the cash. You're gonna take a couple of weeks to even to learn that job. So who are we to think we're gonna bring people, put them into network marketing, the complete paradigm shift from the way traditional business is done, and in two months they're gonna be rich? It doesn't happen. Your first month in the business, your check should be $3.72. Your second month, your check should be $9. Your third month should be $18. The next month, $60, and $150, and $180, and then $400. And that's the way it really works. No, people don't make $15,000 their first month in the business if they do it legitimately. Yes, if I roll over 5,000 people from my other company into the new company, yes, I can make $15,000 my first month. If I'm gonna fill up somebody's warehouse with water filters, yes, I can make $15,000 my first month. But realistically, your first check should be $3. Or $1.22. Or unless you've got some kind of program with a right start, a fast start bonus, or a fast start commission with a $75 bonus, or $100 if you sell a certain package of materials, well great, then maybe your first check's gonna be $100 or $200. That's possible. But thousands of dollars the first month is not possible. So I want my people to make a commitment that their first six months are a learning experience. And whatever they make during the first six months, it's gravy, and just put it back in the business and consider yourself ahead of the game. And the other thing I want in this commitment is I want them to make a one-year commitment to their business. Give me the seven to 10 hours a week, follow the system, and do it for one year. Because I know that at the end of that time, I want them to make an honest evaluation. And I believe if they'll do it for one year, give me the seven to 10 hours and they'll follow the system. At the end of the year, they'll say, you know what? I've got people in my organization. I'm producing a good volume. My organization is growing. I have a nice income coming in. I think I want to do this more. And maybe they'll bump up to 15 hours a week and take an extra day off of their job. But we've got to get rid of this get rich quick mentality that we have in this business. This is not a get rich quick business. It certainly is a get rich quicker business than the corporate world. I mean, we're looking at a two to four year plan. You can't do that in the corporate world. You don't get that working for IBM or Sears or some big conglomerate. You can't do that kind of stuff we're talking about here in two to four years, owning your own life, having those tax advantages, being your own boss, doing those kind of things, the travel opportunities. It's only in this business, and we can do it in a couple of years. So this is a, a, a paradox, to, or it may seem ironic to some of you, but here's what I've discovered. You will lose more prospects because you make the business sound too easy than you will ever lose by making it sound too hard. So in other words, more people will tell you no because you make it sound too easy than will ever tell you no because you make it sound too hard. People were talking about five-figure monthly incomes free cars, trips, tax advantages. That's not supposed to be easy, it's not easy. But it's certainly worth 10 good hours a week for a two to four year plan. And then knowing you've got walk away, lifetime financial security. That's what we're talking about here. All right, so those are the things that any of those things which if you do not have done, stop this tape and do them now because you need to have those things done. Schedule to get started, make sure they have the planner, bring it there, start their prospect list, and make the commitment. Now, let's suppose it's 48 hours later, it's now time for the get started training. Here's the things we wanna do with our new person. 
First thing, we want to set your goals. You ever sponsor someone and say, well, here's the way it's going to be. You know, you will be supervisor at the end of this month. We will have your director by the end of this month. You will have three directors of your own by January. You will be a Ruby director by March. Works real good, doesn't it? What's the problem there? It's not their goal. It's your goal. You will have people who will join your organization because they want to make an extra $250 a month to make their car payment on their, their uh, Monte Carlo. You will have people who will join the organization because they want to make $1,000 a month to send their kids to private school and set aside money for college. And you will have people join your organization because they want complete financial independence. Are those people all going to have the same goal? Of course not. They're all going to approach the business in different ways. They're all going to need a different kind of nurturing. So I want you, now we've got a goal worksheet in here. I want you to work with your people, help them fill out that sheet, but let it be their goals. And, and if you're like most people, you've been working on other people's goals your whole life. You've probably been living other people's story your whole life. Because they say, well, your father was a doctor, and his father was a doctor, and seven generations in our family, they've all been doctors. You want to be a doctor, don't you? So, of course, you want to be a doctor, because you want to keep mom and dad happy, and that's the story they've been telling you since you were little. And then, so you grow up, and you be a doctor. And then one day, in the middle of the night, you wake up, and you realize that you weren't living your story. You were living someone else's story. So let's not perpetuate the process with our new distributors. Let's let them live their story. Now, am I going to make some suggestions to them? Yeah. Am I going to let them know what's realistic and attainable in the business? Yeah. For instance, one of the first goals I like to see any distributor set is a goal to have $1,000 in PV for their organization. And based on what products you have and, and what they cost, you can kind of figure out what's a good, suitable time period that you might suggest to someone. But that's a good first goal for me. Another goal I like to suggest with everyone I work with is to make a goal to become 100% debt free. Where you don't owe a penny to anybody. And by that I mean your car paid cash, your house paid cash, your boat paid cash, everything paid cash. That you have no mortgage, you have no nothing. That's a goal because I think we're, we're trapped by debt in this country and I think it's very important that we get people out of those bonds. Debt is just a indentured servitude and we have everybody in this country living on 125% of what they make and it's really causing a lot of problems for a lot of people. So I'm going to set that. We want the goals to be realistic. They need some short-term goals, and then they need some long-term goals. So like a debt-free, completely debt-free, that would be a long-term goal for most people. Don't start out as your first goal is to be a diamond director. Take the steps through there. Be a supervisor first. Then be a director. Then be a ruby director or an emerald director or a supervisor, whatever it's called in your company, and then work your way to diamond director. Okay, next thing we're going to do at the Get Started training, we're going to schedule their appointment book. Now, this seems pretty simple, doesn't it? You can't imagine how important this little step is to schedule somebody's appointment book. Why? Because remember, when we talked to our prospect, we told them they need at least 7 to 10 hours to build a business. Now, who's... Everybody you talk to says, oh, yes, I can do seven to ten hours. That's no problem. Because they're thinking, I'm working 40 hours at the regular job, or I'm working 50 hours at the regular job. What's seven to ten hours? I mean, that's nothing, right? Well, it's not nothing. Let me tell you something I've discovered. Every person you sponsor is already using all 24 hours of every day already. Did you notice that? <laughs> every person you sponsor is already using all 24 hours of every day already. But they're using that a certain way and they're manifesting a certain reality. So if I sponsor Ron and I want to change the reality that he's manifesting, 
If I want to change his life, if he's making $30,000 a year and I want to turn him into someone who's making $200,000 a year, I have to change the way he's spending his 24 hours. Because he's programmed his 24 hours to make $30,000. Because he's got the poker night on Tuesday night. He's got the bowling night on Wednesday night. He's got roller skating on Thursday night or, you know, uh, Melrose Place or whatever it is. He's got his thing set up and his fishing day or whatever it is. So that's what's, that programming is creating his $30,000 a year income. And his relationship, his spiritual awareness, his consciousness, everything is based on how he's spending his 24 hours. Now, I've got to change his 24 hours. I've got to get him into self-development right because that's a big part of this business and I've got to get him working seven to ten hours a week on his business so how do I do that I have him take out his planner that he bought and he brought to the get started training and I say okay Ron let's you said you got seven to ten hours to do the business this week let's schedule the seven to ten hours that you're gonna do the business this week Okay, so he takes out his planner. And I say, now, we've got a meeting Thursday night. It's going to be down at the Marriott. That's 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. You're going to want to pick up your guests. You're going to want to talk to him afterwards. So why don't you block off three hours on Thursday night? So he gets to Thursday night. He gets, he says, wait a minute. Thursday night? Isn't that the day the Simpsons are on? <laughs> What's happening here? Suddenly, Ron is going to discover that there's a sacrifice. That he has to change the way he's spending his 24 hours. Now, the other thing that happens is, if I sit down with Ron and I literally schedule 7 to 10 hours for him to work his business, you know what's going to happen, Karen? He's going to work his business 7 to 10 hours. Do you know how many people in your organization work their business seven to ten hours a week? None. <laughs> and why are you all laughing? Because you all know you have nobody in your organization who's working the business seven to ten hours a week. They're watching that company video over and over. They're reading that Don Fela book again and again. They're calling up all the friends and talking about Candida with all the sick people. <laughs> They're doing all of the little busy work. They're just not building a business. They're just not working seven to 10 hours a week. What's really working the business? Circulating pre-approach packets, getting appointments and making presentations. That's the business. So if he's got seven to 10 hours a week doing that, you know what, he's gonna do this in a business-like way. So I'm going to schedule his hours. He's going to realize there's a sacrifice and he's going to start thinking about the business in a business-like way. He's going to actually be working the business seven to ten hours a week. Well, you know what happens if people work their business seven to ten hours a week? They get successful. And then they get more hours and they get more successful. It's a vicious circle of success. <laughs> And then he doesn't want to drop out. He doesn't want to quit. He's not negative all the time. It's amazing all the things happen if people actually get successful in the business. So let's program him this way from the start. So he's scared. And see, his first seven to ten hours in the business, that first week, his first two weeks, I'm going to be married to him. I don't want him working without me. I don't want him making those presentations. I don't want him out there talking to his brother-in-law without me. I want as many of those seven to ten hours this first week or two to be spent with me. I'm not, he's not ready to get pushed out of the nest. He needs some help. So we're going to schedule that. So we're going to schedule the upcoming meetings. So all of the meetings for the next 60 days we're going to get in his planner. Why don't you have people at the meetings? Because you're calling them tonight. Are you coming to the meeting tomorrow? Oh, no, I can't. I couldn't get off. i got to work. i got to do this. i got to do that. Why? Because they haven't planned ahead. 60 days in advance, I want him scheduling all the things. And the big company convention, the leadership conference, the rallies, the big events, I want those in there for the whole year. So that means you need to know the event of all those things. See, what we've seen is that distributors who go to the functions, they produce about 40, 50% more than people who don't attend the functions. 
they stay in, they have a higher retention rate, they have higher product volume, they sponsor more people, they're more successful, they help more people be successful. Why? Because they go to the functions. They meet people who are successful, they hear them telling their own story, they learn about the new tools coming out, they see new products unveiled, they hear the president of the company speak, they hear the leaders of the company speak. They're so high when they come out of a convention, most distributors can coast for the next six months after that. So I want as many of my people as possible to a convention. Most companies have about 1% of their distributor force at their annual convention. I never had less than 25 or 30% of my organization, and we've done as high as 60%. How? Because we create a culture that we attend meetings. And we'll talk about that when we get to the core qualities. But more importantly, we schedule it and we put it in the planner. So I know if Ron's just starting out, he's working a job, he's got to ask off, he's got his vacation he's got to worry about. He needs a year ahead of time to ask off for his vacation. I want him to be scheduling his vacation around my company convention and bring his family and the kids and spend a whole week there and have a wonderful time. He'll come three or four days early or stay three or four days late and he'll have a wonderful time at the convention. Meanwhile, his spouse will now be involved because she came to the convention because that's the vacation. She don't have a lot of choice, does she? <laughs> so she's probably gonna not wanna sit in on the event. She might go to a workshop or two, but she's gonna come to the opening address probably. She's probably gonna come to the awards banquet where the company president's gonna speak or the diamond. You know what happens? A little rubs off. She starts to meet, oh, you know, these are actually nice people. They're, you know, it's pretty good. And these are not like I thought. I thought these were all a bunch of pyramid people or something. <laughs> They're really nice people. And, you know, or, she, or he wins a trip to Hawaii and he takes her to Hawaii. All of a sudden, the spouse comes on board and then things are really dynamic when you get two spouses working together in the business. So it's that little thing, scheduling the appointment book, you can't realize until you do it how important that little thing is because it gets people doing the business in a business-like way. We want to go through the company procedures with them. Now what do we mean by that? How to order product. How to transfer volume. How to fill out an application. Some of the simple things. We're going to go through the distributor kit and look at the different sections so that when a problem comes up your people have to know where do they go to get the answer. See, it used to be the other way for me. See, it used to be I like to be the hero. I like to be the guy who solved all the, oh, you didn't get that in your order? Let me call so-and-so at the company. I will take care of it myself. Let me get, hey, I've got this distributor down in Tampa. He ordered product. He ordered the honey peanut bars. They sent him the uh, granola by mistake. I mean, what are you going to do about this? What am I doing? I'm creating codependence. Stop solving your problems for your people. You never do anything for your people that they are able to do themselves. So part of learning the basic procedures is learning what you do when they send the wrong shade of lipstick or the wrong flavor of bar or they leave something off the order. So they know, well, you, so when they call you all hysterical at 3 a.m. because they got the granola bars, you say, here's what you do. Look in the back of the distributor form kit there. Look for the form that says shipping discrepancy form or whatever it's called. Fill that out. Fax it in. They'll take care of it. Or pick up the phone, call this number, talk to so-and-so, explain the situation, and they'll handle it. So teach them those basic company procedures so they learn those things. Next thing I want them to do is I want them to order their business cards. Now, this is another one of those little simple steps. Well, why is this so important? Well, I've discovered something after 15 years in the business, is that distributors with business cards don't drop out. It's amazing, but once people get a, a business card, it's like, I'm in business, you know, and they start to have some, <laughs> some pride in ownership. And say, hey, Joe, have I given you my business card for my new business that I'm doing? There's some pride of ownership. At least that's what I think. That's what I hope. Because the other alternative, of course, is like, I can't stand this thing, but I got a thousand business cards and I ain't quit until I use up every one of them. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know which one it is. I'm hoping it's the first one. But all I know is that there's something magical there when people get a business card. Next thing I want you to do, I want you to open up a separate checking account for your business. So Susan, I want you to go to the bank. I want you to go down and get a separate checking account and just put your name on it and then just write USANA account or network account or business account. And now you don't have to be a corporation, you don't need a lawyer, you don't need anything like that. You're still just a sole proprietorship, but you just get a separate checking account to build your business. And then all of your business related expenses are done through that account. And I want you to buy all of your product retail from yourself. You're looking at me like I'm eating spiders here or something. <laughs> You never knew people actually paid retail price for this stuff, did you? <laughs> That's why I want you to think about this. Couple of reasons. One is, she's able to get that product wholesale because she's a distributor. That's one of the benefits of being a distributor. But that savings from retail to wholesale should actually go into her business account because that's profit from her business. So I want her to have that in the account. And the other reason I want you to do that is I want you to get used to paying retail for your products and knowing the retail price of your product. Because you all are selling your product to all your friends and neighbors and relatives at wholesale. Because they're your friends. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I did a, a very extensive survey and I discovered that my enemies don't do business with me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if your friends and your neighbors and your relatives want to get the stuff at wholesale price, they can sign up, pay the fee and be a distributor. Or they can get on your direct customer program, your preferred customer program, or whatever you may have in your particular company. If not, sell that stuff at retail. Now, I got to tell you, having been involved in this business for so many years, I have seen some of the most incredible products and technology ever in the marketplace come to light because of network marketing. Products that would have never made it in the retail world. You know, Barry's Bar, it isn't going to sell in health food stores. Because people aren't going to know the technology behind it. They don't have the education. They aren't going to get it. They're going to look at that. They're going to look at the bar next to it, the bar next to it, the bar next to it, and say, well, this one's got higher carbs, or this one's cheaper, or this one has a prettier label. We've got special products here that need to be conversationally marketed. And they cost more money sometimes. Well, his bar is supposed to cost more money because it isn't some of the garbage they're selling in the health food stores. And your vitamins cost more money, a lot of you, than some of the garbage they're selling in the health food stores and some of the garbage they're selling in the supermarkets. Don't ever apologize for the price of your products. Please, if people want junky products, they can go down to the supermarket, they can buy them all day long. That's not your unique selling proposition. Our unique selling proposition in this business is unique, exclusive products, cutting edge technology, educational type products that you can't find anywhere else, and they're worth every single penny. I use products from at least seven different companies that I buy from people, and I buy them at retail price because I'm not going to put my name on applications because otherwise people are going to say, yeah, Randy joined my company, he's, you know, and I don't want any of that stuff. So I buy them retail from people, and I'm very grateful and very happy to pay full retail price for them, and I want them to make a retail profit. That's how prosperity works. That's the law of the universe. You have to give and get. You know, those things are worth their value and I'm very happy to pay their value.